Hey! Now this is the second time we're trying this. B! Fan Fox. Uh, no, not that one. Other one. What's the other one? Reflux. Get Anime it right. Reflux. Yeah. I'm a little scatterbrained. I almost fucked up the recording just now. So, you know. <laughs> Anime Reflux. We're, we're, we're doing a good one again. We got a good one again. I'm very happy. Yeah. It was nice. So, Black Lagoon is um i'm not quite sure how big this was like i feel like it's one of those names that you hear about and was definitely popular in some circles but i don't know if it was like a huge smash or anything in the west i mean in japan who fucking knows but in the west because i have heard of this show before uh and not just because of that one clip that i saw of it in that one uh, convention uh, appearance uh, that Jeff Gersman was on, which was fun and made it look fun. But I have heard about it before that, which was just people being like, yeah, this is one of those shows that you probably watch and things. Um, they were right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll open with that. <laughs> they were right. It is quite a good show. It's a little bleak, but it's a good show. <laughs> it it was Trigon that was after its time. It didn't hit as hard as it should have because that anime had already come out. I yes. disagree. I'm not saying it wasn't good. It is quite good, but it feels like the things that the show does, at least at first, have already been done. Yeah, I, I I would definitely I mean that, disagree with that. Cutting ahead very cutting ahead very briefly, there is a scene where a bar gets shot to absolute pieces, and that is straight Trigon. It's 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 more okay. it's it's okay. straight Western a bar to be gets exact. Shut up. Okay, that's that's Western <laughs> to that degree that it is disintegrating because there's twenty people shooting at the same time. Yes, that is yes, that is Western. Oh well, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I don't think that's a fair comparison at all because, like, thematically they're not thematically. Thematically, they're actually I'll grant you thematically they are kind of similar. It's like the one nice guy that does dirt because I don't know. I don't actually know in terms of um, Vashon Stampede because I watched like a couple, maybe three episodes of that and got bored. Um, but, like, just a guy doing dirt when he's not really the kind of guy that should be doing dirt kind of thing. Actually, um, I, I, I do want to also add, I saw a, way, a lot more of Black Lagoon than I did, you know, of Trigun at, like, conventions and stuff. That's so fair. It de definitely had more of an impact, I think. Mm. Yeah, like, Trigun was one of those retro ones like it was it was it was it was a fair bit older if i'm remembering right like that was a 90s anime if i'm right i think it was it definitely had the look of one but um yeah thematically they're they're quite similar tonally this one feels a lot more um a lot less upbeat about everything like Vash the Stampede was a badass on his own and was able to be a badass and generally solve most problems by himself and actually come to a decent solution. Our protagonist here, not so much. Uh, he has some moments, but generally speaking, not so much. Uh, yeah, one of the big themes of Trigon is triumph and self-sacrifice. So yeah, he generally came out ahead in the end, but had to suffer for it. In some way. Yeah. Whereas this one is... No, this this shit is... Bullshit for broken people, is what it is, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so... The show starts with, um... I want to say it starts with like the, the business side of it. Yeah, it does. Um, of Rokuro 
Nakajima, I want to say. Like I say, I watched the entire show, so I'm actually fairly au fait with the names. Um, even though I might have just gotten his surname wrong, I don't know. Um, but he is a... He's middle management, basically. Uh, no, actually, he's not. He's not quite middle management and, and dreams of being the guy on top kind of thing. And he gets sent on an errand to take a disc to somebody. He's basically working delivery to a another country. And on the way, he and his uh, compatriots get uh, abducted and hijacked by the cool people. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're told they're pirates. They do not look like pirates. Yeah, they 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 are awesome. I love pretty much all of them. Uh, so we have the gigantic black guy because Japan, uh, who always wears sunglasses. I have never seen his eyes, um, and he is cool and basically says, "Yeah, we got the thing, so you can basically." fuck off more or less if memory serves uh and they try and ransom the thing back to the company you're gonna have to help me out people that have watched this more recently no maybe the ransom yeah yeah uh so God, I just saw this 20 minutes ago. I should know this. <laughs> yeah. So it turns out that on that disc is um, uh, nuclear weapons research, if memory serves, that the company mm-hmm. were doing on the sly. And it would be very bad if that disc got into the wrong hands. And it is the job of this crew of pirates, hijackers, uh, abductors, to deliver that disc to the wrong hands, essentially. Yep. So, board of directors have a chit-chat. They are entirely okay with just fucking having everyone killed, um, including their own employees. So, through circumstances that I vaguely remember, Rokuro goes with the pirates because he'll just fucking die if he doesn't, more or less. Right? Yeah, they've pretty much declared him dead, so he does not exist, and they will enforce that he should be dead if he does appear in public. Uh, That might happen a bit after that. So he basically goes onto the boat. They have a torpedo boat, these pirates, which is pretty cool. I don't think they ever name it, unfortunately. Um, oh. it would have been cool if it had a cool name, but you know, these, these, these are hard talking tough guy people. They don't name shit. It's a tool. It's a thing. Don't get attached to all that shit. So we get introduced to our dramatis personae of this little crew. There is Benny, who is the basically the tech guy kind of uh yeah runs yeah, like right. sonar and stuff like that and all the things and communications and stuff like that uh he's the nice one and uh that's hmm he has his moments uh of not being so nice uh then there is dutch who is the giant black guy with the sunglasses who is awesome. I two seasons of the show. I never really got a, a really solid read on the character. He is mostly exposition man on all of the dirt that goes on in the underworld, the criminal underworld, and how things operate. Uh, and then we have Revy, who this show really likes to have like shots with her legs spread relaxing casually while also really focusing on certain areas 
I wish they had tweaked her design just a little bit, just a little bit more. She is straight up Misato, and it's very disconcerting. I am perfectly okay with it. I never liked Misato. I know she's like you know, Evangelion's best girl or whatever. I don't, that's that's fucking low standard, is what that is. Uh, but yeah. So she is a badass of a very high level of badass. Uh, so the three of them basically take Rokuro back to Roanapur, which is a city in, I want to say Thailand, but I might be mistaken. It is basically, it's fucking Moss Eisley. It's den of scum and villainy, like you've never seen, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Where where the city is doesn't. I don't think it ever matters. I think it vaguely matters once. Um, and that's in two seasons again. So <clears throat> they basically all go to this bar and relax while figuring out what to do. <clears throat> And a fucking they okay they have a good character moment here of Rokuro having no idea what the fuck is going on. Everyone's giving him shit for just being a normal guy, and Revy starts taking the piss out of him for not drinking. So he immediately loosens his tie and just slugs the drink back as like. I have been forced to drink at so many bullshit social gatherings and work events. Do not take a Japanese businessman lightly. <laughs> that was that was really good. I was yeah. I really liked that. So it was great. Yeah. So yeah, it kind of sells his character a bit and the explanation of what happens very soon after because he, it's pretty clear that he fucking hates his job and the fact that he is still feeling like he needs to do it and rise up the ranks even though he does not fucking care and hates all of it uh so soon after that hit squad shows up and the shooting up the bar thing that uh that slicer mentioned earlier uh so they all sneak out uh and get back to the boat and go riding in the boat because it turns out the hit squad actually have fucking gunships and shit and boats if memory serves so Revy gets to be a badass for a bit which is cool the show has quite nice animation I, I want to say um, because you know it's an action show so it fucking better uh, <clears throat> and it's realized that there is the gunship that is pushing them down, well, up a river, so they're going to be kind of fucking stuck, and we'll have to turn around at some point, because <clears throat> they're a boat. Uh, they get a call from the company that Rokuro works for, and they want to talk to Rokuro, and it's his boss's boss's boss, and he's basically like, okay, so we've basically written off everything about that disc. Um, we just kind of want you to go away, so we suggest you leave those pirates and just disappear somewhere into the mainland of Asia, because, you know, Japan. And uh, we will posthumously promote you to assistant manager or something <laughs> memory serves which is yeah it's... it was such a weird like oh that's that's like such that's so cold <laughs> posthumous promotion i actually don't know if that's a cultural thing or if it's just straight up just as much of a slap in the face as it sounds like it is the thing is, it sounds like a military thing where you promote someone posthumously for heroics in the field and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, you know, Mace Hughes from from that Lalkas, but, that kind of thing. But he's <clears throat> like a stockbroker or some shit. It's, yeah, it's he's he's not a military not man. Military. It's a fucking corporate dude. <laughs> 
So I think the juxtaposition of we'll give you a promotion, we'll have the board attend... Well, we'll... <laughs> I'll recommend that the board attend your funeral. Not that they will, but I'll recommend it. They should probably do that if they have time. Yeah, you know, if you're not busy. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would hope that is an exaggeration of the Japanese work culture, but you just don't know. I don't think it is. I really don't. It, I mean, it obviously depends on what company you're working for, but mm. I don't think so. Mm. So, yeah, that's it. They kind of expect he will die somewhere on his own. Uh, and all of the crew that he's stuck with are definitely going to die when they have to turn that boat around and face that gunship. And that's the first episode. Yeah. It's a shame that conclusion doesn't happen to that. that the conclusion to the fight doesn't happen in episode one. Yeah, it's, they do a lot of two and three episode arcs. Mm. Yeah, there are quite a few of those. And very often it is to great effect of building a greater cumulative narrative between the episodes that they really couldn't do in like 20 minutes like I don't think any of them felt uh, sort of padded out it doesn't feel like there's a lot of padding in this show and because they let the stories breathe and have them over multiple episodes it it doesn't feel too bogged down in too much detail over too short of a period of time that is my experience from watching the whole show. Uh, my other experience of watching the whole show is it is bleak. Mm-hmm. Hmm. The, uh... I don't really remember how season one ends, but I definitely remember the season two ending. And... Whew. Yeah, there's pretty much no no good people in this show not really no uh there are there are gangs that they make you want to think are good people for a time until the other shoe drops that's how this show tends to work where it's like oh you know rock or rock as he ends up being known um he's like a criminal and all these other criminals are like huh Okay, you're one of us. Cool. Let's be cool together. And then they fucking murder people and do some, like, human trafficking shit or something. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. There's some gangs where you, you learn that they, they're in, involved in some shady stuff, and then it's like, oh, that's, that's not actually too bad. And then you get someone else's perspective, and they're, like, killing children and just injecting drugs into people because it's fun or whatever. Oh, God. The stuff that they do with the Russians. Oh, boy. Yeah. What faction was Hansel and Gretel part of? Because they were, like, the standout, fucked up part of that show. They were... human trafficking victims of the Russians. They weren't a part of any faction. They just... Uh, liked to fuck people up. They were hired by the Italians. Uh, ah. Hired, so to speak. Um, but that... Ev everything goes poorly. That whole arc in season two of, of the kids was so disturbing on so many levels. This is not a light show. It has moments of fun. No. It really does. But, oh my god, the stuff it deals with is so... Uh, it definitely shows the worst part of humanity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. <sighs> that said, it's fucking fantastic. It is really good. Yeah. It's great, actually. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, it gets I've... a solid recommendation for me if you think you can handle it emotionally. Yeah, it is... I wouldn't say it's top, top, top tier. Like, there are shows that we've done that I think are better, 
but it's like right below that. It's it's a really really good watch, and it delves into some rough stuff, and the characters are mostly well round. They don't spend a lot of time on Dutch, which disappoints me. I would really like to know more about that guy and where he comes from. Uh, I don't think we even get a nationality for him. Uh, Benny gets some moments. A lot more time is focused on Revy. She is very much the focal point of the show. Which, that's not a bad thing. She is an interesting and entertaining character. Um, but yeah, I, I wish we got a little more on the others as well. Um, if memory yeah, serves, I, sorry. Would you even call Rebby the, I don't know, love interest? Ish. Because I don't know if they actually got together. They... There are moments that, um... There is a thing with a cigarette or a pair of cigarettes that um, is a, a, a big hint that, yeah, they were probably going to go that way if they got more episodes. There is an OVA that is kind of like a season three, but I don't know. I didn't watch it because it doesn't have a dub. Another thing to mention, the dub is fantastic. <laughs> like, oh boy, this is a really good dub. Like, it does... It bothers to do a lot of the languages and accents and stuff that probably is a little shaky in the original Japanese. Um, I get the impression that in this show everyone is actually talking English for the most part. Because uh, Rock is multilingual, but I don't think many other people are beyond English. Um, yeah, it, it, it's fairly clear that not everyone knows Japanese because Rock does have to work as a translator on occasion. Uh, so. Yeah, Roanapur is kind of this giant melting pot of a bunch of crime syndicates, so them having one language they all commonly speak is not out of the realm of possibility. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they they do a lot of stuff in the dub that I is really appreciated with a lot of attention to deta to detail. Uh, they also probably made it way more coarse than the Japanese, and I don't know if they would have gotten a lot of away with a lot of the stuff that Revy says in this show if, they, if it was made this year. <sighs> Yeah, uh, th 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 it's not the first time I've looked at a piece of media and, and realized that it would not be the same if it was made today. For the worse, actually. I don't think, like you said, I don't think they would have been able to get away with it. Yeah, like, Revy is kind of a rotten person, and she describes herself as such, so her making cracks at people let's say, appearing trans um, for the sake of being more diplomatic that also kind of makes it less diplomatic in a, in, a, in a really unfortunate way, but I don't know how else to describe it without actually saying the thing that she said. Um, or nicknaming a woman Chinglish because she speaks with a very thick Chinese accent. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would not work today. Oh, boy. Both the accent and the nickname would not fly today. <laughs> yeah. The accent would... I mean, that you could understand. That is realistic of someone who originally speaks Chinese and then, you know, learns English. But not the nickname. Yeah. So, uh... This, um... If you have a really low tolerance for people being really kind of rough and coarse and insulting to a lot of different people, you're going to miss out on a really good show because of it, and you know that's really unfortunate for you, I guess. Like, 
I don't want to be so crass as to say grow a thicker skin or something, but uh, I think the show would be lesser without that kind of talk because it, oh, it, would. it would really portrays flat. the characters as they are by having them say horrible things. So, Yeah, no, the show would lose a lot of its <clears throat> teeth, atmosphere, many things. Yeah, so... Zero. I have been talking about how great the dub is and the Japanese is probably inferior, but you actually watched the sub as far as I'm aware. So what, what was it actually like? Oh, it was, it was great. Um, I haven't seen it in like a week. Uh, <laughs> I remember liking it. Like, there's nothing noticeably wrong with it. So... It's probably... It, fine it hard for me to really judge the sub it, it wasn't bad <laughs> hmm. i would like it to see how probably. they do with some of the more multilingual stuff like you know the chinese woman and having rock translate russian and japanese um or is it english and japanese like i say i don't know it's hard to tell because this is you know, a translated version of a show that uses many languages. <laughs> so it makes it kind of tricky. But yeah, 100% recommend this. I may have a fondness for Revy despite her being a really terrible person. Uh, so that's weird. Hmm. It It is unfortunate that it makes me like characters who are genuinely horrible people. <laughs> That is the power of good writing, though. I mean, mm. that rule of cool action. I mean, that's can't really escape that. Yeah. So yeah, any any last things to say before we uh, roll up? I enjoyed this. I want to actually watch the whole thing. I, I watched like the f first two episodes, and I I really liked what I was getting out of that. So go back and finish that yeah first season is generally much lighter than the second so if anything I would say give the first season a shot and then if you're squeamish really think about starting that second season because it opens hard <laughs> mm-hmm all right I'm ready to roll with a new one. Uh, I got a 14. Find, trying to find the list. There it is. Bingo. 14 is N. N. Another one off the top of my head. N. 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 Fucking Christ. Of course there are. There are 69 N's. <laughs> ah. Nice. All right then. Forty-nine. <laughs> I've seen this one. Oh, is good. Shit. Uh, bear with me. I fucked up and did a stupid. Uh, da -ba -da -ba. Oh, it has a dub now. I did not actually know that, so I'll be watching that, I guess. Oh, I know this one too. Yeah, you recommended this one to me, I think. Well, slice it. I don't yeah. know. Classic. No oh, game, no life. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, this is the one is where perfect. the author got done for plagiarism, if memory serves, or tracing, or something like that. I think it was tracing. I, yeah, I think, think it was tracing. Yes. <clears throat> the story of No Game No Life centers around Sora and Shiro, a brother and sister whose reputations as brilliant, neat, uh, 
Hikikomori Gamers has spawned urban legends all over the internet. These two gamers even consider the real world as just another crappy game. One day they are summoned by a boy named God to an alternate world. <laughs> there, God has prohibited war and declared this to be a world where everything is decided by games, even national borders. Humanity has been driven back into one remaining city by the other races. Uh, will Sora and Shiro, the good-for-nothing brother and sister, become the saviors of humanity on this alternate world? Well, let's start playing. This is a fun one. It is. It is, it is unfortunate that as far as I'm aware, it never got more than the first season. It definitely got the... Oh, it did get a second season. No, it didn't. I'm an idiot. Now I got a movie. I think. It got No Game No Life Zero, which is a single episode, possibly a film, I don't actually know. That is a yes, that is a prequel movie. And then it got uh, five talking, specials talking about the War of the Gods. Hmm. So yeah, this is a fun one that we have talked about on the podcast before. Uh is really good, and I look forward to watching it again. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's nice to have a, a guaranteed good time. Yeah. Although it's a real shame we won't be able to hear the angels' dub voice. It was so good. I wouldn't know, because I watched it when it, like, had recently come out. Hmm. Ah. I might have to watch the entire thing dubbed. We'll see. So yeah, unless anyone wants to veto it, this is what we're doing. No, no, this is good. Everyone has a veto again, isn't that nice? All oh, right. Yeah. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. See you guys.